Happy Advent. Thank you. As I mentioned a few moments before Mass began, but realizing that there are many of you that were still pouring into the church, you should have been handed one of these small pink pieces of paper, and we encourage our parishioners on the first Sunday of Advent, the first Sunday of Lent, to write down their spiritual practices during these days and seasons of preparation to prepare ourselves for the coming of the Lord. And so I encourage you to do that. We'll collect those at the traditional offertory time and then place those at the feet of our Blessed Mother uh, throughout the Advent and then ultimately the Christmas season as well. For my homily this weekend, I'd kind of almost in a certain sense like to take us on a journey. I'm going to give you a map so that I don't get lost and neither do you. So there are three points to where we're going and what's going to happen. The first is this. Jesus Christ came in time. The Advent season is about us preparing for the recollection, the remembrance, and the celebration that Jesus came in time. A God of all eternity, a God who we give glory to in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, God has always existed. And yet we know that in time, at a certain specific date in time, in Bethlehem, the God of the whole universe became a man and entered into our reality. And Advent is a season of preparation where we prepare ourselves for the birth of Jesus 2,000 years ago in time. Let's be honest. We all love Christmas. We love it. We, we can't wait for it. We celebrate it. We spend a lot of money. We make a lot of food. We travel. We can't wait for Christmas. On Black Friday every year, this is the eighth year in a row, um, I offer an opportunity for the altar boys to go bowling with their dads. So on Friday night, I was down at the Durban Bowl, and as I was driving back up to Bright, um, I called Father Bullock. As I was driving, um, it was like every single house that I passed by had a Christmas tree inside. You could like see through the windows. So as I was driving to Bright, it was pretty bright. And so I call uh, Bullock. I'm just like, dude, everyone has their Christmas tree up. And then I just hung up the phone. So I got a message Saturday morning from Father Bullock. And the message was, was solely this. Man, fight the temptation, fight the temptation. And then he hung up the phone. These are sometimes how our conversations go. But let's be honest. People love Christmas. We all want it to be Christmas. It wasn't even Advent yet. And it was Christmas. So I want you to ask a question this morning. What part of the Christmas story touches your heart the most? Even just think about a nativity scene. What part of the nativity scene captures your heart the most? Is it the infant Christ? The fact that God himself could be held in your arms? Is it the beauty and the majesty and the glory of the Blessed Virgin Mary and her virginity? Is it the fact that God loved the world so much that he became flesh for you and for me? Is it the wise men, the royalty, literally crawling and prostrating themselves in worship before our God? Is it the poverty of the shepherds? Is it the singing of the angels? Is it the struggle and the difficulty of the Blessed Virgin Mary and St. Joseph? What is it that touches your heart? This story is 2,000 years old, and spoiler alert, if you come to Mass on Christmas, you're going to hear that story. 
we're probably going to sing, Oh, Come All Ye Faithful, as the opening song, and Joy to the World as the closing song. Why do we come? What is it that touches our heart about Jesus coming in time? I want to take just a moment, actually, I just want to pause for you to actually, like, what is it? And I want you to answer that question. Just pause this moment and ask God to touch our hearts. I invite you to pray and sing with me. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here. Son of God, appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Jesus came in time, but we also believe that Jesus will come at the end of time. The season of Advent is not just about preparation for Christmas. It is to prepare us for the coming of Jesus in his judgment, in his glory. We profess in our creed, whether it be the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, that we believe that Jesus will come again. When we talk about the end times, there often is this great sense of fear, of worry, and of woe. But there shouldn't be. We should always be prepared. We should always be ready. And in fact, I don't know about you, but I want Jesus to come as soon as possible. Our world is really messed up. Our world is terribly broken. I pray on a regular basis, come Lord Jesus. And when I say those words, I don't say them just about Jesus 2,000 years ago. I want Jesus to come right now. Many of you know that I was born in Michigan. I lived there for five years, and then my family moved to Wisconsin. Some of you might not know, however, that for those 11 years that I lived in Wisconsin, I lived in Waukesha, Wisconsin. My family loves parades. We went to the Waukesha Christmas Parade every single year. Come, Lord Jesus, rescue us from our misery. Rescue us from the insanity of this world. And yet I realize that there is anxiety. I realize that there is fear. And it's awfully, often rooted deeply in some aspect of our life. Either A, we're attached to something in this world that we believe wouldn't be fulfilled in a greater sense in heaven, or we're ashamed of something we've done in this world, and we don't believe that God's mercy is big enough, or we haven't availed ourselves to God's mercy. My brothers and sisters, we have a God who chases after us. You have a God who chases after you with his mercy and his love and his compassion. We have a God who dies for us. And we have a God who promises us more than anything we could ever dream of. So what is it in your life or in your heart that would keep you from full-heartedly praying that Christ would come tonight? What is it, either something we're attached to or something that we're ashamed of, that would keep us from truly praying, come, Lord Jesus, come?
Let's call that to mind and let's offer that to the Lord today. And I invite you to sing and pray with me. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to thee, O Israel. Jesus came in time. He will come at the end of time. And yet the third aspect of Advent is the fact that Jesus comes right now. We believe in a God who is omnipresent, who is always with us. We as Catholics particularly know that God is with us. He is with us right now in the Most Blessed Sacrament, hidden behind this violet veil, signified by this burning candle. God is with us. And Christ wants to enter into our lives. And most beautifully, as 2,000 years ago, he entered into the depths of the earth, being born in a cave, being born in a dwelling place of animals, Christ wants to enter into the depths of our lives. His Eucharistic presence, we were to receive body, blood, soul, and divinity, wants to enter into the depths of our hearts, the depths of our souls, and to bring us peace and healing and his presence. And yet often it is easy for us to numb ourselves by the busyness of the world, by the noise of the world, that we don't actually invite him in. He stays on the outside. Our faith is less of a relationship, less of an intimacy, and more of a mechanical thing that we do. And Christ wants to enter in. I encourage you on this first Sunday of Advent to allow him to enter in. To whatever place in your life or your heart where there is unforgiveness or hatred. Those places in our heart where there is loneliness or depression, anxiety, addiction. To allow Christ to enter into those relationships. Into the stillness, into the silence. And to know that God wants to dwell there in the hurt, in the pain, in the grief, and in the struggle. That that's our God. And that you are not alone. I invite you to just take your hands and place them in the palms of your laps today. I invite you to just close your eyes. We believe in a God who came in time. We believe in a God who will come at the end of time. But we also believe in a God who wants to come right now into your life. I invite you to repeat after me as we pray. Come, Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my heart. Come into the depths. Come into the darkness. Bring your light. Bring your peace. Bring your healing. Come, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. Come into my life. O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, that
that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Amen.